Hello friends, I'm Akash and this is your News of the Week for the week of July 30th to August 5th, 2023. I'm Akash Akodi and a hearty welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's take a look at our first story of the week. Former President Donald Trump has been indicted by a grand jury for the third time. In March of this year, President Trump was indicted by a grand jury in Manhattan on charges of allegedly covering up hush money payments before he became president. In June of this year, President Trump was indicted by a second grand jury in Miami on charges of mishandling U.S. government classified documents that he was not supposed to have after his presidency ended. But on August 1st, 2023, President Trump was indicted by a grand jury in Washington, D.C. on his most serious case yet. His role in the January 6, 2021 insurrection of the Capitol building. On that day two years ago, Trump supporters attempted to rush the U.S. Capitol building in an attempt to obstruct Congress during its certification of the 2020 election results, which handed Biden the victory. Trump had previously called for the supporters to protest on January 6th, and during a political rally directly before the insurrection that day, Trump incited his supporters to walk towards Pennsylvania Avenue. And it's Trump's role in the insurrection that is the primary source of this indictment. Now, the interesting thing about all of these indictments is that a conviction in any of them does not prevent Trump from continuing his 2024 presidential bid. And as Trump is the current frontrunner in the 2024 Republican primaries, we might be seeing Trump face off once more in the 2024 presidential elections, despite everything else that is going on. So that is the situation with President Trump and his third indictment so far. So let's take a look at our second story of the week. The coup d'etat in the West African country of Niger, in which the civilian government of Mohamed Bazoum was replaced by a military government led by General Abdurrahman Chiani. And this coup has taken a new direction, as on July 30th, 2023, the Economic Community of West African States, or ECOWAS, considered the NATO of West Africa and comprising 15 West African countries, including Niger, issued an ultimatum for the Nigerian coup leaders. Either return power to the original civilian government led by Mohamed Bazoum, or face military action by ECOWAS alongside international sanctions. As of the time of recording this, it's been six days since then, and the military government of Chiani is not backing down. Four countries in Africa, namely Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Algeria, announced their opposition to military intervention and ECOWAS's decision, with Mali and Burkina Faso explicitly stating that any intervention in Niger would be considered a declaration of war against themselves as well. In addition, the Nigerian military coup leaders are in support of the Wagner Group paramilitary, which previously fought for Russia during the invasion of Ukraine. And the coup leaders are looking for support from the Wagner Group and its leader Yevgeny Prigozhin in the case that war breaks out in Niger and maybe the surrounding countries. This is a rapidly developing case as you are watching this, and hopefully we're going to be taking a look at this further in depth in a later video. But in the meanwhile, let's take a look at our last story of the week. The terrorist group ISIL detonated a bomb at a political rally in the city of Kar in Pakistan, killing over 63 people and injuring over 200. The political rally was for the JUIF party, which previously had a very close relationship with the Taliban terrorist group in Afghanistan. Now, ISIL and the Taliban have actually been fighting against each other for several years, despite sharing similar goals and using similar methods of violence to achieve those goals. And it's ISIL's bombing at this rally that is another stage in this conflict. And weirdly enough, a spokesperson for the Taliban posted on Twitter regarding this attack, stating that such crimes cannot be justified 
which, to be fair, is a bit ironic given the Taliban's previous attacks. There are no good sides here, as both ISIL and the Taliban have committed many horrific acts of violence towards innocent people, and these terrorist groups have no remorse for their actions. So it is vitally important that these terrorist groups should be stopped as soon as possible. And that is all of your news of the week for the week of July 30th to August 5th, 2023. Thanks so much for watching. Love you. Akash.